Hey guys, this is Jenny here and I am doing my EP certification homework. And so this is going to be a 10 minute teaching on New Covenant theology. So why is it so important that we as prophets and prophetic people have, a, have our New Covenant theology um, mindset worked out? You know, because if we're going to be prophesying over people, you know, we need to make sure that we're seeing them through the lens of the cross, through the lens of what Christ has done. We're no longer under the law of sin and death. We are now under the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. So, you know, in Revelations 19, 10, it says that the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And so if we're going to prophesy under the new covenant, we speak life, we, we, we speak, we see them through the lens of Christ, we see them through the eyes of the Father. And so we ask, like, what is the testimony of Jesus in this person's life? You know, and that is what we're going to call for. So prophecy, 1 Corinthians 14, it's for the building up, for the edification, the comfort. It's for calling the church up higher, for building her, encouraging her. We don't have permission to tear down. It's not about the revealing of sin or things that are negative. We're not, we don't want to slip into that law of that, that, that law of sin and death where we have that mindset of like, okay, we should, you know, pay for our sins or we're trying to like, you know, prove ourselves or earn. It's like, no, Jesus wiped the slate, slate clean. And so we're speaking forth the destiny. So we have to have that right lens and just understanding the fullness of what Jesus crucifixion, his death, his resurrection, what did it do for us? And what has it made, you know, available to us? Because we have to understand that because we're called to be ministers of reconciliation, you know, reconciling the world, pleading with them on God's behalf to be reconciled to God. So if we're going to do that, we have to have this new co covenant like lens down. We have to do it with purity because it is the goodness of God that is going to bring people to repentance. So, you know, let's go to, to Jesus and his sacrifice. Like, what did it do for us? So, you know, Jesus was crucified. He was crucified. He took our sin in his body on the tree. You know, he didn't just die for us, but he died as us. And so like when he was crucified, we were crucified with him, you know? And so it's like, we are forgiven. We are washed. We're cleansed. Jesus said on the cross, he said, it is finished. And, and, and that's true. Like, you know, the, the, the law had this handwriting of requirements that were written against us because we were under the law of sin and death. But Jesus said it was finished. His blood washed it out. So now in him, we no longer have to, you know, atone for our sins because he did it. But, you know, he wasn't just crucified. He was buried, you know, and so when Jesus was buried, when he was put into that tomb, when he went into the ground, we were buried with him. And we see a picture of this in baptism, where baptism is a picture where, you know, we go under the water as a picture of burial. You know, it's like death to the old, death to the sinful nature, and then raised up again into newness of life. So yes, we're, we're forgiven of our sins, but our sinful nature is also dead and it was left in the ground, you know, and so we're new creations in Christ. So we're not just forgiven of past sins, but we're new and we have a new nature and we've been restored back to like God's original design and intention. And so it's no longer of our nature to sin, but it, it's, you know, we walk in holiness. We are holy as he is holy, you know, and then, you know, so we were raised up, we were given a new nature in Christ, but you know, and when Jesus raised, sorry, we were buried with him and then we were raised up, we got the new nature and then now Jesus lives inside of us. So not only do we have a na new nature, but we are one with him and he lives in us. He's taken back the keys of hell and death. He has given us all power and authority. We get to use the name of Jesus, you know, even more so than, than the disciples. And it talks in, in Luke's gospel about how like he gave his disciples, he gave them power and authority over all demons and to heal all sicknesses. It says that they had power over all, they had authority over the, all the powers of darkness. And even more so now that Jesus lives in us, we have authority over all the powers of darkness. We get to tread on serpents and scorpions. Nothing will harm us, you know? And so it's like Jesus took back all the power from the enemy and he gave it to us as our children. So we have, as his children. So we have that incredible 
authority. But then the last part of, you know, of, of what Jesus did on the cross, he didn't, he was raised to dead, but then he also ascended and he ascended and he sat at the right hand of the father. And so we are also ascended in Christ Jesus. We are, we're in him. So we're, he's in us on earth, but we're also in him in heaven, you know, and it says that we have been given access to all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places, that we have everything we need for life and godliness, that there is nothing, you know, if God, who did not withhold his own son, you know, laid down Jesus' life, how much more will he now freely give us all things? So it's like we have this exalted position in Christ, in the heavenly place, where we get to come up to a higher place of authority. And, and you know, it's, it's this place of inheritance and it's this place where we realize that we are above, you know, this second heaven realm, this demonic realm. And often, you know, especially when we're immature in our gifting and mature in the prophetic, I know I, I had a very negative lens that I'm just getting like, you know, maturing and, and getting washed out of it because I would see the demonic so easily and I would see the darkness and, and I'm a really strong feeler. And so I would feel all the negative atmospheres and I just so tuned in to this, but it's like, we actually, I, you know, as his daughter have the privilege to rise above that and to choose to step into a higher position in him and be like, no, I'm going to rise above this atmosphere. I'm going to rise above what I see swirling around me. And I'm going to take my ascended position in Christ where he has given us authority and power. And it's just, it's so incredible. It's like this place of being tucked away, you know, where we abide under the shadow of the almighty God, you know, so we have to understand, like, it's not just you know, when I, when I was saved, it was like, okay, he, you know, Jesus died on the cross for my sins. I need to be forgiven so I can go to heaven. But that is such a shallow, like little understanding. It's so much deeper than that, you know, and then we have to understand this new covenant because it's the fullness of what Jesus did for us so that we can realize like our identity in Christ. Like, who are we? Who are we as sons and daughters? What does it mean that we've been adopted into our family? What has been made available to us? You know, it says in Proverbs 23, 7, it says that as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So it is so important that we have it right in our mindset and our belief system. What do we believe about ourselves? What is our identity? What do we believe about ourselves? What do we believe about God? Because those, you know, if we think that we're still sinners, if we're hard on ourselves, if we're judgmental, if we're, you know, even just to our towards ourselves, that's going to work out in how we prophesy and we deal with other people, because if you don't know how to love, you know, we're, we're told to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. We have to get that first. Like we have to learn to love ourselves. We have to learn who we are in Christ, you know, and then out of that identity, that corrected identity of how awesome, how powerful, how amazing, how holy, how pure, how righteous we are. Then we can look at those who are lost and we can be like, okay, this is how Jesus looks at them. Jesus is wanting them to be reconciled. Jesus is calling them into sonship. And so we can see them and we can call them into their place of sonship, you know, but we have to have that right, you know, and First John 4, 17, it says that love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, as Jesus is, so are we in this world. You know, and this is just something that I've really been getting a hold of these last, you know, few years, like when Jesus, just going back to like, you know, Jesus dying and being resurrected. So like he died as sin you know, he, he became a curse for us. He died of sin. He was raised up. It says that he was the firstborn of a new creation. So before Jesus, we all were born in, like at, born into Adam, born into sin. But now we are born again. We're born as Jesus was, and he's the firstborn. So now we get to live. And as I just quoted in first John four seventeen, like as Jesus is, so are we in this world, you know? And so Jesus came, you know, he always referred to himself as the son of man, because even though he was fully God and he's existed before time, he laid aside that divinity and he chose to come fully 
as a man, he left that aside because he didn't want to just come and be like, oh, I'm God, you know, I'm going to live impressively and, you know, you guys are just hopeless because you're not God. He's like, no, I'm going to lay that aside. I'm going to live as a man. I'm going to walk as a man. And I'm going to show you the example of what a man can do when they understand who they are, their connection with the father and live in that place of dependence. So we have Jesus. He came and he showed us how to live, but he is the firstborn of a new creation. And so we are like him. We used to meditate on that. Like we are like him as Jesus is. So are we in this world. And you know, creation is groaning for the manifestation of the sons of God. Creation is groaning. The world is crying out for new covenant sons and daughters to get a hold of their identity and who they are and to rise up and to step into the power, to step into the fullness of who God has called them to be because we are the answer. We are the answer to, to, to creation, to their pain, to their hopelessness, to their purpose depression, to their lack of identity where they don't even know who they are. And so that is is why it's like, you know, Jesus is like, he's predestined us. Romans 8, predestined us to be conformed to the image. God predestined us to be conformed to the image of his son. We're supposed to look like Jesus. We're going to look like Jesus. So we have to understand, you know, it's so, we just have to understand this beautiful covenant, you know, and I just find in this journey, it's like the more the more that I know, it's like the more that I realize I don't know anything. And so it's like, it just, it's like new, new levels of revelation just bring you into deeper levels of humility. And, and, you know, I just hope that you guys will just like, just be in awe and wonder of what God has done and, and who you are. Like take hold of just this revelation of who you are as a son, as a daughter, what God says about you. You have all power all authority. So if you feel like the enemy has any power in your life, you can take it back. You just take it back because it's all belongs to you. So anyway, that's a little more than 10 minutes. Thanks so much for listening to my message.